Can you give us an overview of an uh, overview of the, the forwards, the, the performance. I mean, they, we, we all know about the two halves, the first half and the second half. Uh, and what aspects do you think you can still work on? Yeah, if you look at that game, the first half was really good for the forwards. I think our scrumming, um, we didn't get a lot of opportunities in the morning, but um, the second half turned out to be a nightmare for us, uh, especially for the forwards when it came to morning. We missed a lot of detail there, which we covered. Um, looking forward to the Scarlet's game, making sure that everyone is, uh, they understand their roles. Um, our scrums was good. Um, line up more defense, we missed where we had to go. So we spent some time uh, working on that, on the detail, and making sure that everyone understands. As collectively, everyone fulfills his role, then it will be better for us. So it's something that we, we're working on, making sure that uh, we can make that more defense a strong, strong fortress for us. Oh, but you touched on the on the Scarlet's game. Um, I think the beauty about this competition, and, and uh, Ruan can perhaps chat about it as well, but I mean, when we play Super Rugby, you go to New Zealand, you basically get all the same, or more or less the same style, of, and, and Australia is more or less the same style. Now you go from Italy to Wales, and then you go to Ireland. Uh, is, is that a, a pleasure? Is it, is it easier to deal with? Well, not necessarily easier, but is it more refreshing to deal with such a variety of styles when from week to week when you start planning? I think it's, for us, it's a new challenge, you know, coming to play in Europe, uh, uh, different styles that you're going to come up against, different uh, level of players, it's international players. You know, we've been involved so many years in, in the Super Rugby and we know exactly what's happening there. Uh, for us to be part of this competition is something that we're looking forward to. Um, definitely the challenge and, and that's where we can measure ourselves actually playing against this different level of players, uh, playing styles. So for us being here now, uh, going into the competitions with these teams, they're all good teams. They've been in this competition for years. Um, they know what it takes. Uh, we're new into this. Um, so it's something to get used to, but also something for us to look forward to, to, to measure ourselves. Run, if you want to touch on that as well from a player's perspective, the, the changes or the adjustments that you have to make. Yeah, I think also <laughs> it's, it's a very excitement, exciting challenge for all of us. It's a new competition, um, something to look forward to every week, um, new challenges every week. So we'll definitely approach this more, more as an international competition in, in a sense what it is. I mean, if you take the Italian side and the, the Scottish sides uh, or the, the Welsh sides there, they're much different style of play, much more aggressive, much more physical. So I think the preparation and the homework that needs to be done will differ from week to week. And I think that makes it much more exciting and keeping us on our toes to adapt every week to a different style of play and a different style of game. How's it all with How's it all Good on you. Albert, um, you know, of course, everyone expected this will be probably this first round was probably a tough week, but you guys did quite well to get that first win. Do um, you think it might have been just somewhat of a bit of a wake-up call for, for a lot of the teams and the players? Um, because, you know, playing against European teams was something that the Cheetahs and the Kings did for quite a while. And everyone always thought the, that Super Rugby is the be-all and end-all of, you know, club rugby in the world. Um, but this has gone to prove that Europe is much closer to the Southern Hemisphere than what people perceived. No, definitely. I agree with you. I think the gap is not as big as everyone thought. Um, if you come and look at the teams here where they play, um, it'll be nice for us to actually play at home against them as well. You know, we're all touring here. We're playing in Europe uh, under their circumstances, conditions. So it's something that it would be nice to see how they actually perform when they come and play in South Africa. But uh, talking about the gap, you're right. Uh, it's quality players. Um, you tend to find that with the European teams, um, there's a lot of Islanders playing in these teams, a, a lot of foreigners uh, playing in these teams. So it, it's actually almost like a, a collective team effort from their side, having all these different type of players in the team that makes it hard. Uh, it's a very competitive competition and, and it shows you that the gap is not as big as everyone thinks it is. Hi, Albert. It's Morgan. From, uh, well, um, just to, to follow up on the Scarlet's um, 
uh, question. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, you'll be the first of the four teams now to face a Welsh team. What are you guys expecting from them uh, on Friday? Well, we analysed them. They've got a very good set piece attack, um, very good back line. The way they play, it's, it's a couple of Lions players in the team there. It's one of the teams that don't make a lot of uh, errors. So they very well coach, uh, good, good quality players, communication is good on the field. So for us, it's been clinical. Uh, we expect a physical battle out there. There is opportunities for us, but making sure that uh, if we want to take those opportunities, we all need to be on the same page and understand what we want to do. So it's a challenge that we're looking forward to. Uh, again, saying, you know, you played us all the different teams and, and each of them got their own attributes. So the Welsh team, very well coached. It's going to be a physical team. Their detail is, is on, on the note. They know what they're doing. So from our side, we're also going to have to be uh, very smart and, and making sure that everyone understands the detail. Um, and then uh, thank you for that. If I can ask uh, Ruan, um, you guys had a, you enjoyed a, a good set piece uh, against um, a zebra and it seems to be like a almost like a bomb squad type of thing if i could put it that way when it comes to the front rows how's the competition between uh, the props going for that starting position oh morgan uh, i think it's it's probably one of the best things you can have in a team is good competition and guys keeping each other on their toes um we strive to make each other better and keep keep on challenging each other at training and when we analyze games and help each other so I think a bit of healthy competition can only do us good. Um, but definitely, I think we are very privileged in the front race at this stage. We, we've got some good guys that can can challenge each other. And yeah, we're looking forward to, to this weekend. It's definitely going to be a different challenge. Um, but we do, the hard work is going to continue. And yeah, hopefully we can, can pull off another good one. Um, and just to continue on that thought, uh, in, the, in training, are you... Um, have you become like a utility? Are you trading as a utility prop, if I can put it that way, on both sides? Or are you sticking um, just to the one side? Yeah, yeah well, we joke around. It's definitely team first. So, yeah, when, when, wherever they need me at this stage, um, I think I'll, I'll be willing to, to do my part. Um, but for now, I think I'll, I'll cover loose it most probably for, for quite a while now. But if it, if it happens, then I might move back to tight it. So, but at this stage, I'm just enjoying it back at the lines, um, enjoying it being fit and just enjoying the new, the new bunch of guys. It's, there's a very, very exciting feeling in the team and yeah, yeah. we're enjoying, enjoying the URC at this stage. So I'm just thankful for that at this stage. Uh, and my last question to Albert, is there any injury update? Uh, no injuries from the weekend, uh, so we've got a healthy squad that we can select from, and a couple of guys actually returned from from niggles that they had that, that's available for selection. So uh, it's a nice uh, problem to have as a coach that when you've got all the guys available and and to select from. So from our side, all good. Uh, sorry, how about you are those players who are returning? Uh, Stian, Stian is fully training with us now. So he's with us, uh, and then we've got obviously Yaku now that, that we're managing, but he's, he's ready to go. He played his uh, 40 minutes and, and he's available again. So Niggles out of the way. Thank you so much. Um, so Ruan, Robert, Adam Morgan here. Um, Ruan, uh, you guys played against a team this weekend that was very um, Azuri heavy. Um, and this weekend, you guys are going to have a very Welsh heavy team. Or, you know, Scarlet is one of the team that produces more Welsh players. Um, is this something that you guys spoke about in the fact that there would be a couple of Lions games to you? Yeah, um, definitely. Like we said previously, it's a, it's, it's a different country. It's a different mindset. It's a different approach to a new game. Um, so obviously there's new challenges and that's why we put in the hard work this week and make sure we're ready for them and, and approach them how we feel would be necessary at this stage. Um, Albert, it's Kanisa here from Sport24. Good morning, guys, and congratulations on the performance on Saturday. Um, Hi, Kanisa, Jake, thank you. you mentioned the issue of, of gaps um, and Jake White in his post-match presser after the defeat against uh, Leinster, he mentioned the salary gap. Um, I just want to, I'd like to find out now, how does now that um, force coaches or force the South African rugby fraternity in particular to um, be even better from a coaching perspective, because it's clear that you won't be able to compete with the European teams financially, and that's just because of the exchange rate. Yeah, it's a tough one, you know, at the end of the day, 
if one must make it work according to their budget. And um, sometimes, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, uh, when we buy players or sign players, we can't go lateral. Sometimes you, you know, having a squad of 40 players, you actually want the, the 40 best players. But sometimes when you buy with your budget, you can only afford a certain amount of players within that budget. So to get the exceptional players, it's going to, you know, you have to break the bank to get there. So it is a difficult one for, for South African teams to compete against the exchange rate. But it's something that we have to work within and make sure that uh, the guys that we do get in our team, you know, is, is competitive with those guys. And I think uh, it's more of a team effort than, than actually the individual. So for us, it's all about the team, making sure that the guys that's in the team, in the squad, that we can work together and work hard. Um, so the budget is one problem, but the, the thing for us is making sure that the guys that we do have, like the Bulls, Sharks, uh, Stormers and us, is making sure that that squad effort is actually worth more than actually what the budget means. Mm. And you also feel that this particular tournament, that being the URC, it will sharpen the players' rugby education even more. Not that to say that um, Super Rugby wasn't a very good finishing school. It does an excellent one in so many ways. But you feel that um, URC, especially with what you've raised, that a number of these teams have a lot of um, quality test players within their ranks. You feel that this now will sharpen a lot of the players' rugby education? Yeah, definitely. Uh, if you go look back at Super Rugby, you know, we're not in New Zealand teams, we're not in Australian teams. Now suddenly we're playing against Italy, Italy Wales, Scotland, uh, Irish teams. So it's a different uh, attribute that they bring towards the field, uh, the players that's in there, different qualities. So we, we're going to have to be a lot sharper. And I mean, the guys at the Lions, when we sit in our meetings, everyone speaks and and, and the IT, uh, what they bring up and, and in the sense of what's lying ahead for us, it's actually amazing to see that we're not far behind, but what we do get is that you get all these different things coming up every game. So it's going to be a challenge for us, but also it's something that we look forward to. We do have the players. Um, again, it comes down to detail. You know, all those guys that have got different plans, game plans, and making sure that what we actually prepare is, is going to work for us on the weekend against what they come with. Okay, no, thank you. Albert. Um, Albert and Rowan, um, Percival Young from ENC. Um, can I ask a question of two in Afrikaans phrases in the morning? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Albert, can I ask a question? Um, um, here we are coming to the last Friday of the week. You have been in the first half um, in comparison with the second half. Do you think you are going to have the same same with the week that comes in Scandals? Well, we have not had the same same with the second half in the second half. I think what has happened to us is that we have had a very good beginning and in the second half in the second half het ons een fout op fout gemaakt en, en natuurlijk probeer hy ons een fout maak by een rechtstelling te maak en in die volgende beweging. So ons wil oomblik vir oomblik speel en um, in die, die ander kant in die box, uh, coaches box het ons gesê, miskien was die tweede helft een blessing vir ons in die sin van um, dat het daar te goed gegaan in die eerste helft en dan is daar areas waar ons kan werk in die tweede helft. So ons benadering gaan wees, ons wil vraag detail Allemaal, zeker maak allemaal in die detail en dan van die begin af recht weer speel vir 80 minuten. So ons wil nie span wees dat vir twee half te speel nie. Uh, ons het geleer uit, ons het, ons het gesien dat uh, die voordeel uit wat gebeur het wel in die tweede helft vir ons het sekere areas vir ons uitgelig waar ons kan werk. Ons wil nie weggeloop het van die eerste wedstrijd uh, sê nou met 60 punte ween en, en gedink het alles is recht nie. So het was een goeie begin vir ons um, maar het is ook vir ons uh, dat besef dat ons moet terug gaan en, en sekere areas aan werk as ons voorin te wil gaan in die competitie. Ron, as ons wil geheer, ek vraag aan Ron, hoe denk jy, hoe gaan die, hoe, hoe gaan, hoe gaan die fys, eh, fysische deel van die wedstrijd wees die na week die na die wal is gespannen, skaal ons mee? Ja, nee, natuurlijk, het is, um, het is, het is, het is wel eens, um, ek denk hulle voorspelers is, is in het om te fight, ek denk hulle is, heel te malle ander, ander approach is, dat ons ten die Italiaanse gaan kruid, baie missioneel is, en ook hard uitkom vir sekere tijd van die, van die wedstrijd, maar ek denk hulle gaan, hulle hou van skram, hulle hou definitief van mol, so, ek denk het gaan baie visies voorwees, en ons gaan nie kan, ons gaan nie net vir een gedeelte van die wedstrijd kan werk, en dan denk, denk ek ons self gebeur, en dit is iets waar ons heel dit nie fight gaan met blij, as ons gaan skram, ons moet vir 25 seconde skram, is dit wat ons moet gaan doen, as ons moet mol, ons moet, moet ander mol vir een paar seconde, is dit wat ons moet gaan doen, want hulle gaan definitief nie uit die competitie uittrek, en uit die contest, dit gaan, dit gaan definitief een arm gevecht wees, en die een wat die langste in het gaan blij, hoop hulle krij die, die resultaten op die einde van die dag. 
ek praat soms met die laaste vraag, maar vraag, sê ek van, jylle gepraat van wijs Afrikaanse, Afrikaanse in die, in die URC spanne is, is dit een voordeel of een nadeel van jylle, van, het klink my asof, baie van die manne, uh, van die Afrikaanse wat in die um, spanne is, reeds, die achtergrond van die Afrikaanse spanne het, en daar ook alle nieuwe spanne daar kan inlig, hoe om voor te bereid vir jylle Afrikaanse spanne? Ja, ons sien het eerst een nadeel, nie, ek denk, dit is een uh, goeie geleentheid vir ons, uh, weet om te speel, waar, waar ons van die spelers wat in Zuid-Afrika was, wat ons verlaat het om oor see te speel, speel nou teen van hulle ou spanmaats, en, en dit is amper waar jy ook self gaan nie teen na spelers, so dit is een geleentheid waar ons ouwens kry om hulle self te bewys ook, maar ons is nie, um, dat ons denk het is tot nadeel van ons, dier, dier hulle wat ons extra gaan analyse op die hoogpunt nie, um, ons sien het as een speler, nie die individu, as waar hy vandaan kom nie, ons kyk na die span en, en ons vat het vandaan. Baie, baie, dankie. Albert, um, just one question, uh, I mean, the Lions is known for playing an excellent game in the first half and then dropping off in the second half. Isn't the speed that the Lions played, and I mean, you were brilliant in the first half with your backline and attacking and everything, that players like um, Ruan, your props and everything can't keep up and you physically outplay that, you, you just you play them into the ground in them trying to keep up with the play. So maybe the two styles of rugby, you've got a brilliant back of forwards and a brilliant back line, but the styles doesn't fit uh, completely. Well, I, I think it's more what opposition allows you in the first half. So if the opportunities is there, then we have to take it. One thing that we are working on is getting that high intensity up. We actually want to be a team that can play for 80 minutes. Uh, everyone talks about New Zealand, where they come in the last 20 minutes and they put teams away. So for our side, uh, we've got the power, we've got the strength, we've got the players there. It's making sure that whatever we deliver in the first half, we can follow up in the second half. It's going to take some time. Uh, we don't want to take the foot off the pedal. So if the opposition allows us uh, a lot of momentum in the first half, we want to build onto that. And then everyone knows now that they talk about the bomb squad. Uh, we've got the finishes here. So if there's some tired legs out there, then we can replace them. But uh, we don't want to take a step back and say, let's slow down in the first half because we just want to get through this game. Every opportunity we're going to get, we're going to take. Uh, and so be it in the second half, the players will uh, catch up with that high intensity that we are training at at the moment. And we want to keep on uh, pushing that going forward. Hi, hi Jan. It's, uh, Gareth here from BBC Scrum 5 in Wales. Uh, I was just interested in knowing what your kind of logistical plan is over the next week or so. Where are you based? Where will you be visiting? Do you have any excursions planned at all? Um, yeah, maybe can you repeat that question again? Sorry. I wanted to know where you are based right now and whether or not you have any plans to visit Wales, uh, you know, what, what's your what's your schedule for the next week before you play the Scarlets? Yeah, I Gareth, just from my side, yeah, um, we're in Italy at the moment due to the URC um, um, competition format rules. You know, we have to be uh, for 10 days based in, in a country. Uh, COVID plays a big role, so excursions and all those things is actually, uh, we're putting it on, on, on the back foot for now. Uh, due to all the rules of COVID, making sure that everyone is safe. Um, we want to carry on being in a safe position for us. So staying in a hotel, just going to the gym and, and the, the training field, that's sort of our excursions that we've got. Go and show the guys the rugby fields that, yeah, uh, where we train. But, uh, you know, due to the rules of this competition, uh, we, we want to play it safe and make sure everyone stays safe um, during this time. So we're in Italy at the moment. Tomorrow we're going to leave for Swansea. We will arrive there tomorrow afternoon. And then obviously it's the same protocols for us being in the hotel, uh, just the rugby field and, and the gym. Um, I think it's very important that everyone adhere to the rules and, and, and stick to it. So that's the, the end we've been dealt with during this COVID. And we we'll make sure everyone is safe. How's that for you as players, Ron? Yeah, well, obviously it's not it's not like we used to with super happy tours where you can go out and see places and go sightseeing and enjoy a cup of coffee in a coffee shop every now and then but obviously we're just so privileged to play in this competition and we're just so so desperate to get out in the field so anything necessary to make this work and and make this competition good for all of us in the future 
Um, we'll stick it out for now and hopefully pretty soon we will be allowed to go out and see places and just in, enjoy the outdoors a bit more in the new places that we get to see as rugby players. So we're still all very, very privileged to be here and to play this game in this new competition. So yeah, like Coach Albert said, this is the end with in Delbeuf and we'll keep to that for the best as possible for now. And then hopefully in the future, we, we might change and we will, we will benefit from it. Well, I've got some good news for you. Um, apparently, according to TripAdvisor, Ellis Park is the 41st best thing to see in Johannesburg. <laughs> Park of Scarlets is the seventh best attraction in Llanelli. So you're getting to see some of us in the top 10 anyway. <laughs> no, oh, thanks. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> good luck. Good luck of the weekend uh, thank to you all. Thank, thank you, sir. Thanks, Gareth. Uh, any more questions, guys? Yeah, I've just got one last question for Albert, please. That's fine, Morgan. Um, I'd like to go to lunch, but we'll take one more. Sure. Albert, uh, what are, uh, as part of this new uh, coaching structure uh, at the Lions, what are your objectives uh, for the um, <clears throat> for the forwards and stuff in the coming weeks? Um, what are you looking to, to, to achieve with the team? You know, we've got a very strong forward back. Uh, my objective is, is just clarification. You know, um, we, we touched on it earlier uh, defensively on our mall stoppage. We've got a very strong back. No reason for us to concede a mall try. If the detail is, is on par and everyone knows what to do, then uh, we should be a lot better there. Um, we want to build on the strong forward back. We've got really good players, exciting players, uh, making sure that we become a force to reckon with in, in the forwards. Uh, not only in the scrums and the malls, but the way we play on the field as well. We spoke about this high intensity, um, you know, on want to lift the level. And that's something that the players are capable of. It's just going to take a, a couple of weeks for them to get used, more used to it, so that we can go for longer uh, with that same intensity. So my objective is, is, is to make the players the best we can make them, to give them the opportunity to express themselves on the field. So we'll make sure that we prepare them well, train under under tough conditions, and in the games when it comes out, they can actually express their, their skill level and, and enjoy it. Thanks, Morgan. Uh, guys, I'll have to wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, any more questions? Last, 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 last question. All good, Masa. Thank you. Happy. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. We'll see you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers, cheers. Good luck. Thanks, guys. Cheers, cheers. Good luck. Right. Thank you. Thank you.